Uh, I'm so glad this afternoon. Um, now I have to confess something right in front of you all. This is my first time preaching in English. <laughs> now I've been sharing so many stuff in English, but never share, really preach in English. I've shared testimony, I've shared, been communicating and stuff in English, but not preaching. So, and uh, sometimes my brain think in Khmer, sometimes I, I think in English. When I think in English, I kind of go with the flow easier. But when I think in Khmer, that's when my English become the coming rich. <laughs> it's all the English and the Khmer and all mixed up together, right? It's funny sometimes when you try to do two languages at the same time or that things in, in your head, it just keep going on. Uh, it's, it's difficult sometimes, but I'll, I'll do my best. In about, about four months ago, about four months ago, when I was praying, I was praying because I, I've shared a lot in the Khmer services that sometimes I don't really know what the church needs. I don't. There's about 2,700 people here, five services, two campuses. We don't go around and do the survey to understand what you need. But I know something. I know the one that knows the bottom of your heart. I know the one that can change your heart. And so I was, I was spending time with the Lord, and I was praying, and I felt so strong. I felt so strong in my spirit. The Lord told me when, when, when it was back in... Uh, April, um, the Lord say, April is the month of hope. Share with my people that there's hope. And then when it, came, when, when it came to May, I was a bit struggling, to be honest. I was not sure if we're going to do fruitful season or not. I was praying two weeks before fruitful season. The Lord started to show me about seed. I knew immediately will go about seed in the month of May. And financial seed is one of the many seeds the Lord has placed. I feel like the Lord actually has given us seeds in, in every aspect of our life to succeed. But we need to be sowers. And then when it came to June, the Lord just spoke like the whole time. It's prayer. Taught my people know how to pray. Prayer that open heavens, prayer that shut doors. And July, I thought it was ev about evangelism, but it was not. It's about small groups. It's about community. And then when it came to August, I felt so strong again. The Lord said, feed my people with my word. Feed my people with my word. I knew, I just told Luke actually earlier. I said, I'm, I'm so excited. Because he shared something earlier when he was leading prayer, and he captured the word relationship. That, that, that was the exact word two, about two weeks ago. There's something in me that was about to, to talk about relationship. So I know the Lord is doing something. I told him. I said, when I, I flashed back about four or five months back, now I knew what the Lord, where the Lord's heading us, leading us to by end of 2019. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And so we're going to go for four weeks on the topic of the Word of God. And so any preachers here will be talking about the Word of God. Amen? And by the end of, of, of this series, I want to encourage you and I want to inspire you. I want to show you from the Word of God. Let the Word of God inspire your heart to love His Word. Amen? Because His Word is powerful. And then I talk to the Bible Society. I have, I have our team talk to the Bible Society. Hey, bring you all your Bibles here. Sell your Bibles at our place. We don't take your commissions. Just sell the Bible. I encourage with them, like, every three months, come on. Set up a table. You know why? Because I want the people to have the Word of God. I know you, you have it on your smart device. You know, um, and, and that, that's fine, and that's fine. But, and usually it's available offline. Or sometimes when you're out, out of the internet, you can't have it. Some people can download it offline, but when your battery dies, 
you don't have it. But with the book, with the actual book, as long as you don't put it in water, you can read it all the time. <laughs> okay? It's only that part. The rest of the time, it's fine. It's fine. Okay? And there's so many references that help you to understand the Word of God more. And when I was praying about the month of August, the verse started in my mind, reminded me in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. But this afternoon, I will read from you, for you from verse 7 to verse 9. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law of my sermon Moses give, gave you. I just want to remind you, the Word of God, the Bible, doesn't matter you have the actual Bible, you have it as a soft copy Bible. Somebody, obey the Word of the Lord. Trust the Lord to write. Trust the Lord to protect. Last week, I shared with the Khmer congregations. I, I mean, I'm sorry, most of you here are Khmer. I mean, in the Khmer language service. That there are so many people in the history that believe, that was touched and experienced the power of the Word of God and they, they protect the Word of God through many histories. So the, 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 the history of words so many times that has occurred in the history of the earth. People keep the Word of God. People publish. They find ways to publish the Word of God so that everybody can own one so that everybody can read on their own. So appreciate the Bible that you are holding. Appreciate, even though it's, it's a soft copy or the hard copy, appreciate it because God wants you to know and He protects His Word. Amen? I may speak broken English, but the Word of God never been broken. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. That you may be carefully, careful, you may be successful wherever you go. Keep the book of the law always on your lips. In Khmer we said, keep it in your mouth. So that you always speak it out. Meditate on it day and night. So that you will be careful to do everything written in it. It's very clear. You, you put it in your mouth, you proclaim it, you meditate on it. Meditating means you try to understand it, you think about it, so that everything you do will be successful. Whatever it is written, and you do according to what it is written, so that you will be successful. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This is the promise that God had with Joshua. This is the time, if, if you read in the book of Joshua, it's about the time that he has to lead the people of Israel, the Israelite, from the wandering desert that they have been wandering around for 40 years to go to the promised land. This is about it. If you study about the whole book, it's talking about the people being led by Joshua. God told him to lead the people. It's time to lead the people to the promised land. And then when they get to the promised land, they divided the land as the heritage, as what promised. But there's so many obstacles that they have faced. So many times, so many circumstances that they have to fight for. And if you notice, it's the young generation that's going to the promised land. There are some obstacles in our life when the word of God promises us that we will be successful, we will be prosperous. It doesn't mean that we just walk through it and get it. We have to fight for it. But even though we have to fight for it, even though sometimes it looks 
intimidating. Sometimes it is look very difficult. David one time faced Goliath. And Goliath has been intimidating the people of Israel for about 40 days every morning. It's, it's frightening. Life sometimes is frightening, to be honest. Circumstances that are like frightening us from moving forward. But there are some circumstances or some situations that just look deceitful. Doesn't look dangerous at all, but still can stop us going to the promised land. And so for Joshua, for him to lead the people to the promised land, he really depend on the presence of God. He really depend on the word of God. And I want to show you what, ha- what, what he has been doing, what David has been doing when they face obstacle in their lives. In the book of Joshua, chapter 3, verse 7. And the Lord said to Joshua, there's, there's a couple of things I want you to hear from, 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 from these uh, verses. And the Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel, so they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's water or river, go and stand in the river. Joshua said to the Israelites, come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you. And he started telling, he started giving them the instructions. Three key words I want you to see here. Number one, when they try to move, when they try to across the river, it's obstacle right in front of them. The Jordan River was flowing. It's a flowing river. And they have to cross the river with so many people. And then the Lord said, I want you to pick something. Whenever God's people face an obstacle, you always see a phrase that said, God said. Or the people go to him. And then God said. So many times God spoke. When we face our circumstances, align our ears, get ready to hear the word of God because he always speaks. In the midst of your frightening situation, in the midst of your difficulties, in the midst of the enemy you are standing against, God speaks. And God still speaks to us today. And verse 8, it said, The priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant. Number two here, I want you to see, is the word covenant. When God made the covenant, actually, God made several covenants, about five of them. God made the first covenant with Noah. And when he made the covenant, it means it's, it's, it's an ordained relational bond. A covenant means you make a relationship with somebody. And you're going, going to do something with somebody. That's a covenant. When God made a covenant with people... He always promised them that he will be doing something for them and he will never fail. He will never leave them alone. When God made the covenant with Noah, he said he will not punish the earth by the flood again. And he will protect Noah and his family from the judgment. When he made the covenant with Abraham, many generations later on to to, to Abraham, He said to Abraham that he will bless his descendants and through him, the rest of the world will be blessed. And we are here today, actually, is we are the witness to what God has promised to Abraham thousands of years ago. And we can see that, right? Therefore, we can trust him. We can trust the covenant. God made the covenant with Moses. That God will bring him 
to Egypt and lead the people of Israel out of Egypt, and God will be with him. God did exactly what he said. God made a covenant with David that his descendant will be the royal heir to the people of Israel. And it came all, if you study the history, it came all the way to, to um, Mary and Joseph. And David, another partic particular situation that he was facing. I just want to read you, to you about something in uh, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 30. That's, that's when God made a covenant. This is just an example when God made a covenant with people. He protects them. But let's see what, what David did when he faced obstacles. Samuel, and in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, David was greatly distressed. Not just not more stress. He was greatly distressed. If you read the whole chapter, he was crying till there was no tear. He was, he was that bad. He was in, in that bad condition. Because the men were talking about stoning him. His people was talking about to kill him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. But then verse 7, it leads us to something. Okay, so even though in the midst of situation in Ziklag, if you, you read the story, it, it happened in, in, in the town of Ziklag. And when the enemy came and burned everything and robbed their wives and all of their children, and all of their belongings, all of the animals, just wipe everything off and take everything with them. And so these men, when they came back, they were greatly distressed. They were angry, even, even got mad with David. In verse 7, David came to Abiathar, uh, difficult words, the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the effort, the ephod. And then the priest brought him, and David inquired, the Lord, shall I pursue this riding part, this raiding party? Will I overtake them? In short, let me explain the whole story. And so when the enemy came and robbed everything, David was very, very angry, and he was also very, very distressed. He didn't know what to do. He came to the priest. He said, Give me the ephod. The ephod, it was a, 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 a kind of the uh, the out, outer part garment of the Levites, uh, that for them to go into the presence of God, to hear God. And David said, bring the ephod to me, so that I can go into the presence of the Lord and ask Him. The Bible said, the priest gave it to him, and he went into the presence of the Lord and asked, shall I go pursue them? Will I win them or not? Do you know what? Sometimes when we face circumstances, there's only you can go into the presence of God and ask God for the wisdom to deal with your own situation. And if you continue to, to read, the Lord said, go. Go. And I will bless you. Go. And you will get them back. And David went out. If you read the Bible, I've read the Bible, I've read that verse so many times in that chapter so many times. To see a clearer pattern or a clearer um, directions. When the Lord said go, means like, Lord, uh, you want me to go left, to go right, straight, or which direction? The Lord just said go. <laughs> There's no GPS to follow the enemy. There is no Google map. There is no satellite to track them. Sometimes in our life, when we are in the middle of the situations, sometimes we have no idea where to go. But one thing that we should know and we should do is to come into the presence of God and talk to Him. As of today, we don't need an effort to help us to go to the presence of the Lord. 
let me tell you what we have. The answer is in Jesus' covenant. In Luke chapter 20, 22, verse 20. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which I pour out for you. Jesus made a new, command, uh, a new covenant with us by his blood. That from now on, we are safe because of his blood. We are restored because of his blood. We can go straight to the Lord and spend time with the Lord to hear from him for our specific situations. Let me be honest. Sometimes when we go through difficulties, of course, we need others around us to encourage us, to help us in different times, to pray for us. But let me tell you something. There's so many times that I personally, I have to go to the Lord myself to hear from the Lord. Nobody can tell me that specific things, what to do, where to go. In fact, a lot of people tell me the same thing. Go to the Lord and figure it out your own. But God has been faithful. God has been faithful. I can share with you so many testimonies that God has been faithful when we come into God's presence and He will speak. And when He speaks, you have to align yourself to the Word of God. In Luke chapter 11, verse 11 to 13, which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, Will you give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? In the new day, in the new, in, in, in the world today, we have helped from the Holy Spirit. In John 14, 26, but the advocates, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. The Holy Spirit will teach us all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So in the midst of circumstances, what should we do? Go to the presence of God and listen. The Holy Spirit will remind things of what Christ has taught us. Amen? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you... I, sorry. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid the powerful weapon that we have is to depend on the word of God and the Holy Spirit is with us to remind us what we have learned what we have heard of the word of God and that's why it is so important for us to get into the habit of spending time with the Lord reading the Bible meditate on the word because that's the key when we come into God's presence, the Holy Spirit will remind us something. When we are in the midst of circumstances, when we don't know what to do, the Holy Spirit will speak. The Holy Spirit will tell us what we need to do for that specific situation. Amen? The last verse. In John 16, verse 12 to 14. I have much more to say, more than you can now bear. But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears. And He will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that He will receive 
what He will make known to you. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will remind you. The Holy Spirit will tell us what to do in the midst of our obstacles, in the midst of our battles, in the midst of our circumstances, in the midst of our fear, in the midst of situations that we don't know what to do. The Holy Spirit will remind us. But for us, our job is to meditate on the Word of God. Amen? Our job is to meditate on the Word of God. And if we don't know what to do in that specific situation, when we come to the Lord and when the Lord spoke to us, when the Lord speaks to us, we have to act on it. Move and God will move. Amen? In the book of Matthew, if I remember right, chapter 16, verse 18 or 19. The Word of God said, He has given us the key of heaven. The key that will unlock whatever we bind on earth, He will bind it on heaven. Whatever we bind, so we do first. And then, He will bind it in heaven as well. The other word I can say is, when we hear the Word of God, when the Holy Spirit reminds us the Word of God to our circumstances, we have to act on it and, we, and then we have heaven back us up. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Don't worry. We are not fighting on our own strength, but we are fighting on the word, by the Word of God. And the Word of God is the most powerful weapon in our lives. Amen. May you all stand up. I just want to say this last part to you. And also let's be real to ourselves. Every one of us face certain things in our life. We are, may, maybe some of us are facing right now. That sometimes we don't know what to do with these situations. We are frightened by these situations. We are lost by these situations. And sometimes there's some situation that doesn't look really that dangerous, but very deceitful. Sometimes we don't know how to get out of it. Just ignore it. I'm, I'm sorry. Just acknowledge it. Not ignore it. Acknowledge it. Just acknowledge it. If we are, if we are facing a Goliath, just ignore it. I'm so sorry. Again. Just acknowledge it. If we are facing the river that we have to go to the other side to get what the Lord has promised with us, just acknowledge it, that it is there. But let me tell you something and remind you something. The Lord has never promised us to go to the promised land without obstacles. But He did promise us that we will go to that promised land. And He did promise us that He is with us no Amen. matter what. Amen. 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 Number two, find the Word of God. What is it about the situation that you are facing it right now? Ask the Holy Spirit to help you what to do with that situation. And when you find the Word of God, when the Holy Spirit reminds you what you need to do, Act on it. Tell your neighbors, act on it. And then heaven will back you up. Amen? So please, please place your hand in, on your heart. I just want to pray for you all that the Word of God will root in your heart. That Let the Word of God sink into your heart. Father God, I pray right now We are not just live, Father God, by just bread alone, but every word from your mouth. Father God, let your word sing into our heart. Let us write your word in our heart, Father God. Holy Spirit, remind us. Remind us. Help us to know 
what made known by Christ to us, Father God. And we pray that every circumstances that we are facing, every obstacle, that there's nothing that is bigger than your word. Speak to us right now, Father God. Speak to our heart, Father God. Let us know you're always with us. There is no such circumstances that is bigger than your name. Your name's above all names, Father God. I pray right now. I pray right now. I pray against the name of sickness that's bothering your people right now here, Father God. There are people that are facing financial Goliath. There are people that are facing discouragement. Can't cross to the other side. Father God, I speak hope right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, let your word, let your word be in our hearts and let your word be in our mouth that we proclaim the most powerful weapon out of our mouth is your word toward our circumstances. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll have our leaders here, our pastors and our leaders here. If you need any prayer, please come to the front and uh, in New Life, we believe in laying hands. We believe in prayer together. And I know God will move when His people pray. Amen. God bless you and see you next week.